Hey everybody out there, it's me, Andrew Lutz, your host of Let's Talk, but no politics. And just want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by PB Max. What a great snack PB Max is with all its peanut butter and peanuts and chocolate cookie covered goodness. It's maximum satisfaction. PB Max, we mean peanut butter. Okay, so let's get to the show here today. And there is so many questions in the world that can be debatable and need to be answered. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Was there a second shooter on the grassy knoll when JFK <clears throat> was assassinated? And thanks to my good friend John Cazera and The Athletic, we now have another topic to discuss and debate. And it comes from a little movie called League of Their Own. And it is, did Dottie intentionally or on purpose drop the ball at the end of the movie? So I'm going to give a little feedback. There's going to be spoiler alerts if you've never seen the movie. And if you haven't, I, I got to say, I kind of feel sorry for you because it's a great movie. Uh, so this movie takes place around World War II when it has to deal with the all Women's Baseball League. And there are two sisters, Dod Dottie Henson and, and Kit Keller. Dottie is the older sister, Kit's the little sister. So they're gonna go play in this league. They are getting scouted. Just, this is a recap here. They're getting scouted. And Dottie doesn't want anything to do with the league. Her husband's overseas. She wants to just work on the farm that they live on, and that's it. But Kit really wants to go. Like any other younger sibling, I know because I'm one, is really eager to just get out, see the world. And Dottie ends up going, and they go and do this league. So pretty much everything is going great. Uh, they're coming together, sisterhood. Uh, they are playing for the Rockford Peaches, which is doing absolutely amazing. But Dottie becomes this big, larger-than-life star. And Kit becomes resentful. And the Rockford Peaches traitor to the rival Racine Bells. So later on in the movie, where I'm reading this off of Wikipedia, so you got to give me a minute. Um, <laughs> you, they get... Uh, Dottie's husband comes back from the war and she decides that she's pretty much done. She's going to go back with her husband, Bob, and they're going to just go live on the farm and have a family. And even though it's the peaches and the bells in the world series, but then all of a sudden the world series hits a game seven deciding game and Dottie reconsiders and she comes back to play in the final game. And Kit is the Kit is the starting pitcher for the Racing Bells, and this is what leads into now. With the Bells leading by a run in the top of the ninth, Dottie drives in the go-ahead run. Kit is distraught, but gets a second chance when she comes to bat with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Under immense pressure, she gets a hit, and ignoring the third base coach is signed to stop, scores the winning run by knocking her her sister over at the plate and dislodging the ball from her hand. Okay, so that's where I'm going to end it. Racing wins. It's a great movie. Okay, very touching ending. But we're here to not go through this route. We're here to talk about did she intentionally drop it or was it dislodged? And today I have two different guests with I feel two different perspectives. And first I have Amber from, <laughs> from Fat Girl Jokes Podcast and my good friend, John Cazera. So how are you doing, Cuz? Doing well. Doing good? Yeah, living the dream. Okay. So we're going to kind of do a little bit of a round table. We'll have Amber go first, ladies first, and we'll do um, pretty much... How do you feel? Did did Kit knock the ball out, or did Dottie intentionally drop it? So the first thing I want to say is that 
she didn't knock Dottie over. She bulldozed into Dottie. <laughs> that was intense. Just she was gunning for it. So I think that Dottie just dropped it. I think Kit's rage just pushed her so hard that she dropped the ball. I don't think Dottie in the entirety of the movie had not given her sister anything. She always did absolutely everything she could. And if Kit couldn't keep up, then Kit couldn't keep up. So it doesn't make sense for her to just all of a sudden end it now, especially after telling the pitcher, you know, how to beat her. So that's, that's my take. <laughs> John, what's your take on this? And then we'll go. So uh, I, I think for similar reasons, I, I agree with Amber. I, I, think, I don't think there's, there's anything that suggests that Dottie drops this ball on purpose. And, you know, I think it's a, it's a great line that, that basically like Kit's rage takes over. He, even, even if, you know, if that ball had gone out of the park, she may have still trucked Dottie at the plate. <laughs> like, that's, that's a great point. Um, but, you know, Dot, Dottie's super competitive. Uh, and, you know, just to, to give, give credit, you know, the, the article in The Athletic by uh, Joe Posnaski, um, you know, they, they make reference to just parts throughout the movie where Dottie is not letting Kit win at, at anything. And, you know, from, from things as, as simple as just, you know, from early on where they're, you know, uh, playing softball, you know, they're walking back to the barn. And Dottie has to walk faster than Kit back to the barn. I mean, that level of hyper competitiveness, you know, is ingrained in a lot of the things that she does. Um, so I think that that alone suggests to me that she just gets beaten on this play. And you know, you, you can maybe get into the physics of it if you really wanted to, and, and it gets maybe low center of gravity. And, you know, Dottie's a, just a, you know, very, very tall lady. And she, she put a shoulder right into her and gave her everything she got. And she uh, scores the winning run. But, no, I do not think she threw it. I'm going to say. I know you're going to disagree. <laughs> I, I am wholeheartedly going to disagree. And I am going to disagree because of the fact, I think, she saw Kit get enraged, get distraught, start to get upset, and she saw Kit wanted it more. And sometimes when you see somebody that wants it more, but even though you still know you beat them, you, you, you give it to them. And that's where... I have to put in. That's where I think that's where it comes down to. Now, we all have siblings, okay? John, you, I know John has an older sister. I have an older brother. Amber, do you have a younger or older sister? My sister is nine and a half years older than me, almost to the day. Okay, so I know for a fact my brother if this was going to happen when we were younger, there was no way. No way. My brother tortured me throughout my whole entire childhood. <laughs> but now as you get older, people grow. And this is where I think, like I said, I think Kit wanted it. And she knew that she was never going to get it because Dottie was always going to be better. And I think my brother's done that for me a couple of times with playing video games or a sport or something of that nature. And Dottie is just, I, I, she played catcher. She was an all-star catcher. She is not going to take that hit and drop the ball. Okay? You can bring in your ESPN, sports science stuff. This is an all-star professional catcher. She is not going to take the hit and just drop the ball. Uh, I don't know about that. I think, I mean, Kit hit a high ball, a high fastball when 
we all knew that that was the one that she could not hit. And of course she's going to make that hit and, and, you know, bring people home with an RBI and all that stuff. Um, but I just don't think that, I, I don't think that she would just let it go. <laughs> I, I can't, I, I just can't agree. I cannot agree that, that Dottie would just, oh, whatever. Like, I don't really care. Kit cares more. It's because Kit cares so much that I think Dottie, I don't know, maybe Dottie just wants to be like, see, I'm still better than you. <laughs> and the, the, I got it. Amber makes a great point because, and this happens after. And I think this, this contradicts your point, Andrew of Dottie seeing Kit, uh, you know, having having this visceral reaction after giving up the go-ahead run, or the tying run, before the top of the, before the, the ninth. And, but before Kit comes to bat, Dottie goes to talk to Ellen Sue and says, high fastballs, can't hit them, can't lay off them. If, if she was then going to, throw the game after that why walk out to the mound and tell exactly. your exactly but she hit 100 percent. she hit the high fastball but she knew that she wasn't going to be able to and she didn't know there is no way that she could have known that kid was hitting them because she quit for the season basically for the whole world series she wasn't there now all of a sudden like she doesn't know kit could have been working on them for like the whole time and Dottie's like hmm let's try to take her down yeah, there you go. So maybe she was like high fastball, and then she hits it, and she's like, "Wow, she's trying to improve herself." Once again, she wants it more. I'm just here, just to. I want to say be here, but I'm, I'm I'm here. I'm here. I came back. I I got one more game in me, and then this is it. And then Kit's like, "You know what? This is gonna be my life. This is how I'm gonna do this." and everything else so i'm going to practice she practices how to i'm just saying hypothetically she practices that pitch the hit she hits it and dotty something clicks in dotty's head and says this is hers this is not my life this is hers so she gives it to her <laughs> john and i are like already making the same look <laughs> <laughs> i John, go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> all right, all right. So, the, so the the other thing that, that's called out in, in the article from the Athletic is she gets trucked. Yeah. And, and after initial contact, she still has the ball. If she's going to do this on purpose, why wait until her hand strikes the ground to drop the ball? Like, shouldn't she? If if, if she is. Thinking about this as she's rounding third and catches that ball from the cutoff lady, uh, that that this is going to go down. That you know what, kids been practicing high fastballs and BP with Racine, and you know maybe maybe my six games away before you know I, I turned around at, at Yellowstone, I didn't have my chance to to do pre scout, and I know that you know she can now you know hit a high fastball, but to to process all that and then. Hand hits the ground after getting mowed down at the plate. Then to drop it seems highly suspect, Andrew. Cinematically, I completely agree. Just if if you're gonna if if you want people to think that she threw the game, you are not gonna show her dropping the ball afterwards. If we want to hold up this comp the competitiveness between the two, that let's face it, this whole season of um, baseball I mean it kind of ruined their relationship which yeah. it, it definitely caused tension between the two but I think there's always been that tension and I think it was per, like increased greatly um I think that's why Dottie didn't want to go back and Dottie didn't want to go see Cooperstown and see the women in baseball because maybe she felt guilty yeah that she wasn't gonna let up Okay, so we all talked about th the trucking, and at the network, we are one, I, I think we're a pretty a family, a team, so I reached out to uh, our baseball guy, Derek, 
Um, <laughs> and I asked him, I said, well, what do you think? And he said, no, 100% she dropped it on purpose. <laughs> because the ball is in her hand and there is no way that you are going to just release the ball. Okay? So that's where I'm, I'm on the same page with him. That, that is a choice to release the ball. Now, my other thing is something in baseball history. We talk about competitiveness of the game and kind of throwing a game. I'm going to go all the way back to the 1919 Black Sox scandal. Amber, are you aware of this? I am not. Okay. Remember, I don't know anything about sports. <laughs> okay. So pretty much just to sum it up, back in 1919, the Chicago White Sox make the um, – the World Series, and they hate their and they hate their owner. He's a cheap guy. Uh, last name's Comiskey. I can't remember the first name, but he is he is just cheap and everything else. So the mafia pretty much comes to them and was like, "Listen, we know you guys are going to win the World Series. Make it look competitive, but throw it, and we'll give you more money than what you would make." in a year, you know, playing baseball. So there's this big conspiracy of who was actually trying and who wasn't trying and everything else. And they were banned from baseball. A lot of the players were banned from baseball. The most iconic one is Julius Joe Jackson, as John put in the chat, eight men out. It's, it's the movie version of it. So that's where I'm going with. Maybe she wanted to make it look competitive and make – like you guys said, make Kit work for it a little bit more at this point. And then right when, you know, it got to the point she wanted to give Kit the moment in the sun after she made it look like she was competitive and just kind of showed that she could beat Dottie in like the last, we'll say second of the game, because baseball is not a time game, but last second, last out, last inning, just to give Get that little bit of self-esteem, kind of like I do with my kids when I'm playing a video game with them or something. I know I can beat them, but sometimes I hold back a little bit towards the end and I let them win and then they make fun of me because I lost. But maybe Dottie did this because it's her sister. And I hate this sound all weird, but maybe Dottie wasn't really going to be about that life and baseball life, but she knew Kit wanted it. I think just under the fact that Kit wanted it more, Dottie gave it to her. And she did a whole 1919 Black Sox scandal to her. Ah, uh, so bringing out the big guns here, you guys don't know this, but I actually played softball for a really good portion of uh, middle school and high school. <laughs> so I have the most sport knowledge that I have is in baseball and softball. <laughs> Um, and we have a little, a, a few more rules, I would think, in softball than baseball, but for the yeah. most part, running home and catching it and trying to tag someone out at home, similar, if not the same. Yeah. Um, with my personal experience, I would agree that the catcher would be doing everything they can to, like, stop them. So this could be an acting issue or it could be a story issue, but it didn't look like, I, I didn't feel like it looked like Dottie was totally prepared to tag her out. I think it looked more like she was just, I don't know, waiting to get trampled. I don't know. I think she was just thrown off. I think she turned around and saw her and she was just like, oh, it's coming. <laughs> I'm getting knocked over now. I think the pressure got to her. John, do you have anything? A few. Okay. So, <laughs> See, if, oh, go ahead. If you're, if you knew, if you found out that your older brother or older sibling threw it, how would you feel about it? Does it tarnish your victory? That's oh, just 100%. It's on asterisks on asterisks. You'd be like, no, wait. That, that, that just 
puts a black eye on the whole thing. And I don't think that, you know, for as competitive as both of them are, I, I don't think Kit would ever stand for that. that. That would just derail, you know, Thanksgivings down the line for, for ages. Well, it, it did, didn't it? I mean, even it just did. the whole point of it was they meet up again at Cooperstown. I'm actually watching the last play as we're talking. <laughs> Pulled it up on YouTube. Cheater. <laughs> this is the nice thing about Zoom. Um, no, plus two, I have dual monitors, so I couldn't do this without that. Fancy. But um, but would it tarnish me? I would look at it as a gift. That's so sappy. <laughs> would, you, would you have felt like you beat him? Would you have felt like you truly won? If no. You knew. If I knew? But she doesn't know. But don't you think she's paranoid enough about her sister to figure it out if she did? I mean, she was just like, why are you trying to walk faster than me in the very beginning? <laughs> like, she's just walking, but you made it into a competition. So now, she, if she had any inkling that her sister dropped the ball, she would have said something. If she dropped it on purpose. Maybe she changed. Maybe when Bob came back. Bob. That Bob. That, that, that was... I mean, maybe that maybe that changed. Here, I, I actually just watched. Okay, it. now I, I kind of want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Here, wait a minute. Um, We're gonna dual monitor this. I can look. I can watch it through the reflection in your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should be up. Is it up? Or did I, I don't have it. Oh, okay. Yeah. You just share share your screen. Yeah, I was gonna share my screen. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay, let me rewind okay. it. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna break this down then. All right, I'm gonna get it to. Okay, just rounding third. Okay. Just rounding third. I, I should have thought about this in the game. Can you guys see the screen? Yeah, and that is that is a hard stop from the third base coach. And get, <laughs> like, nah. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Go back, go back a couple frames, Andrew. Okay. <laughs> this is Kit coming down the third base line. Well, wait. She's like... I've seen this look because I've had this look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you've seen this look on me, John, when we're playing... Uh, <laughs> we were playing football or something in the side. Yeah. Game. Who's stopping that girl? <laughs> no one. Okay, now she goes down. She goes down. Ball is still in the hand. That ball is – that is that is just – I'm going to let it go. No, again, okay, again, it's a movie, so cinematography-wise, but you see her just kind – it like, it literally slips out. She doesn't release it. It, that, it It's – instead of her going <laughs> – <laughs> That's what uh, – see, that's where, that's where it gets me, is that it's not – um. The whole release aspect of it. It's very... It looks like she's just like, I'm good. Like... Um, I totally disagree. Go, John. You so, look like so, you really want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then you get then you get their, their meetup post-game. Dot, Dottie is, is ready, dressed up. She's ready to hit the road. She's ready to go back to Oregon, work on the dairy, dairy farm, you know, make her dozens of babies and Kit is still in her gear and she's, she's still, you know, popping bottles uh, with, <laughs> with her celebrating like you do in the forties. Um, and, and not only that, but you see, you know, the, the paths that they are choosing, you know, Dottie's ready to go start her life. Kit, like Andrew mentioned, this is, this is her life. Her life is now baseball, but Dottie says to her, you beat me. And it's it's not it's it's a concession of a fact. It's not not you know I let you have this one. It's you beat me, you know for for all the times that Dottie was was coming out on top. You know she's the league's best player, and you know they they run that that 
newsreel that you know, Kit's just her kid's sister and kind of along for the ride. Yeah. Kit, Kit triumphs here. And props to Kit. Totally agree. If you also, Andrew, I just want you to take some time to yourself and look at Dottie's face when Kit is bolting towards her and she gets ready to tag her out. She makes a face like she is ready to do everything she can to not let this girl score. <laughs> Gotta go back to that. I don't... Her face is just like, I'm ready. And she gets like, she... It's a little fear, I think, but it's also like there is it is a like a competitiveness in her face. Yeah, it it goes from fear to competitiveness, like like oh my goodness, I've never seen this before so hard, and now I'm just going. To, and I think maybe she she lets go. I just feel like she lets go. That's my thing. I just, the whole let go, like, um, like all dogs go to heaven when Charlie just lets go, you know? And it, no. I don't know how to make, like, almost like a death. It's like the death of her career is right there because she, she didn't care about it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, just, this is you. This isn't me. This is, this is you. I was just here because <clears throat> we were, <clears throat> excuse me, we were milking cows in Oregon, feeding them Harvey bars because they were constipated. And, I don't, <laughs> and, and there you go. I mean, that's what, I still don't, I feel like she just lets go. Like once that ball hits the ground and she's like, wow, and then let's go. Has she ever, another kind of hypothetical question is, has Kit ever trucked Dottie before? I mean, it's seemingly they've always been teammates, right? Yeah. I, I teammates, think. but also internal rivals. Sure. You can tell the competitiveness. So if, I'm not, I'm not saying I agree, but if she did, did Kid also have inside kind of on how to take Dottie down. Kind of like the high fastball. That, that's it's like, it's awesome. just like what you were saying, John, with um, physics. <laughs> <laughs> Science. That's Science. right. Now, if you want to go a layer deeper here, um, this, is, this is clearly Ellen Sue's fault why uh, the Rock from Peaches lose. She should throw off speed here. She's gone high heat twice. And she needs to throw a change up or a breaking ball here. Something low and away and something that, that Kit's not clearly looking for. But no, no. no just so you, just okay. keep throwing the high balls. So you're saying Dottie gave her bad advice to throw the game? Dottie's no. the catcher. No. We, play, <laughs> we played baseball. We played softball. My daughter still plays softball to this day. <clears throat> and she dabbles in pitching a little bit, and we all know the catcher kind of controls the game. Shake her off. That's all you got to do. He's like, you know what? We threw this bitch twice. No. Yeah. Like, you're absolutely right. If you're going to throw, that's great. She can't hit high balls. She goes for him, but she can't hit him. Wonderful. But if you keep throwing the same thing, like, she's – obviously she knows that that's something that she needs to work on. So she's like, all right, I'm ready for it. If anything, she set her up for success. <laughs> yeah. This, th this is, this is, this is either a Ellen Sue's fault or B Jimmy Dugan's fault because your top player just peaced out for the world series for six games. And he's like, Oh yeah, sure. And I've been peaced out for a little bit. Did you just compare Dennis Rodman to a fictional character? He hits <laughs> Are they not kind of both fictional characters? Touche. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no offense to Dennis Rodman if he ever does listen to this. You are one of my favorite NBA players of all time. <clears throat> I just Even though don't... you're fiction. It, it... He admits there's two sides. I've watched many documentaries on on the rod man there <laughs> he is a he is a 
definitely a different character. All right, so I think I'm feeling beat on this, and I'm trying to come up with another argument to persuade. One. Yeah. I was figuring with you, Amber, because I didn't know you, and I'm like, okay, she saw it. I'm like, oh, Amber's going to be on my side. <clears throat> no, nope, I, got, I got my boy John down here. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's interesting, what's interesting is, to, to reference the, the article from The Athletic, uh, they, they quoted an author, uh, Jennifer Iacopelli. Um, she says, one, nobody would make this accusation of a male fictional sports figure. How do you guys feel about that? Would you say that Roy Roy if Roy Hobbs doesn't doesn't hit the home run at the end of the natural, did did he throw it? Very, very interesting point. It, if Benny wow. the Jet gets eaten by uh, <laughs> the beast the in his pickle at the end of the sandlot, <laughs> is that something he wanted? That is wow, damn. I feel like a fake feminist. <laughs> 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 Didn't even make that connection. <laughs> That's okay. Wait, was there another point after that? I thought you said two. Uh, it, no. Um, that that I'm sorry. That that's the one that that stood out to me. But you know, and I, I think it's true. And I I don't know of a. I can't make a comparison, but nor do I think that that is something that I think would actively come up for debate. I think a lot of people would just accept it. Like, oh, a super competitive guy, that guy, and he got beat. Not not trying to drop in, you know, uh, some sort of, uh, I guess, kind of emotional aspect to it to maybe suggest that a lady could not be as equally competitive. Okay, okay, it's not baseball, but it's two siblings. Okay, I, I just thought of a, a comparison of a sports movie. And please hear me out on this. Just please 100% hear me out on this before I sound like a complete idiot. It's not a sports movie, and it is two brothers. Or it is a sports movie, and it is two brothers. Have we all seen The Little Giants? Guys, I haven't. <laughs> okay. Well, the... It's been a while. I think I watched half of it when I was five. Okay. And then we got, we got Rick Moranis and... Um... Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill, Okay. It's they're. I wouldn't say they're ultra competitive, but Ed O'Neill's character is. He is this Heisman Trophy winning uh, football player. Comes back home, starts a car dealership. Super, you know, famous around the town. He's the youth little, the youth football coach. Um, cuts his niece, so Rick Moranis feels bad as the father and younger brother and says, I'm going to start my own football team. And then they do get into the whole competitiveness of getting players, you know, even though Ed O'Neill's like trumpet around, I think in like a Mercedes or something. And Rick Moranis has that sweet go-kart. Um, but then they decide that whoever wins this one game, that's the youth football team. Okay. And there's a speech in there. Rick Moranis gives it one time. You only have to beat, a, beat somebody one time in a way. You know, you could lose to them a million times in a row, but if you beat them that one time, it's not that bad. But those are two brothers. The younger brother finally beats the more successful older brother at his own game. I mean, Dottie and Kit both played the same game, but it was more Dottie's game than Kit's. So, I mean, there's a good little comparison there. Was it more Dottie's game? I think, <laughs> I think it was. Dottie was... Dottie was... Oh, good. Here we go. I'm going to give more sports analogies and you might not know. Dottie reminds me of, of Barry Sanders. This super athletic player who just 
played the game. And then when he got bored with it, he walked away. And he left at the top of his game. And he was just like, I'm done. You know, this is not fun for me anymore. I'm done. And then you got Kit, who we can give, I want to compare her maybe athletic-wise, but somebody like Jerry Rice, who is this all-time great, and he played way past his prime, but he's gonna he's not gonna go, he's not gonna retire until the wheels fall off. Where Dottie was like, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. And like I said, Kit wanted this. She this was her. She was gonna go until the wheels fall off. You could tell that from the beginning. Dottie was just doing this as a hobby. So what you're saying is it is Kit's game and not Dottie's. At this point, it's a passing of the torch. Can we pass the torch? Maybe Dottie's passing the torch. Not so much dropping the ball as you put as we as we look a little bit more deep into it. Maybe it's a passing the torch game. I'm the superstar. Now you're the superstar, kid. Here's the torch. I'm just curious who 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 were you comparing Dottie to? Was was that going to be Jim Brown? I'm not sure. I was going to Jim Brown and Barry Sanders. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I think Jim Brown was more of a, <clears throat> excuse me, a more of a political reason. Okay. okay the, like, I don't think he meshed well or something, uh, but that was more of a political reason than, uh, and he got Barry into Sanders. movies. Yeah, where he got yeah. into movies and he still was in the spotlight where Barry Sanders was like, I'm going back to Oklahoma, guys. All right. Check you later. Peace. No. Yeah, so, you, so, you, so a proverbial passing of the torch. Maybe that's what that is. Dropping this ball. Yes. No. This is your game. This is your game. I'm Optimus Prime. Dottie is Optimus Prime. I'm going Transformers. I don't know if you like Transformers, Amber. I'm a huge fan. I don't like anything. I hate everything. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna Except go... for League of Their Own. It's the only movie I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm going to go Transformers movie 1986 on this. Dottie is Optimus Prime. And then you have Kit as Rodimus Prime. This wild, untamed person that has talent. And Dottie's like, I'm going to pass you the Matrix. You have the Autobot Matrix of leadership now. And I think maybe that's what it came down to. Kit wanted it more. It's a passing of the torch. There you go. You you did it. You beat me. Uh, you didn't totally beat me, but you wanted it more than me. And I'm tired, and I just want to go home with Bob. So if, if you do that subconsciously, is it on purpose? Dang. <laughs> he came prepared. Yeah. yeah. You're oh. 100%. That's the sound, sound of winning if an argument. Subconscious, <laughs> if it's subconscious, it's not really like, it's not, a, it's literally not a conscious choice yeah. to do so. So maybe she did do it subconsciously. Maybe her body in her hand was just like, nah, give up. But I don't think there was anything showing that she was planning on giving up consciously. I hate you, John. <laughs> I think we broke him. That's it. Yes. We, we call it a podcast. That's it. That's the end, right? <laughs> uh, Good night, guys. Yeah, I think... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, it's broken. Yeah, if you do, it's like sleepwalking. You, you're, you're in control, but you're not in control. <laughs> do you choose to sleepwalk? Huh? Do you, I, you said it's like sleepwalking. Do you choose to sleepwalk? No, you don't choose to sleepwalk. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, 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 I'm trying to come up with something, but it's kind of hard. So, <laughs> good job, John. 
Okay. Okay, yeah. Andrew, you can accept yeah. the defeat. Yeah. I, we can't hand it over to you, though. <laughs> I'm not gonna see. This is this is where I'm different. I'm hyper competitive. I'm just gonna go with agree to disagree. <laughs> even though, <laughs> even well, though we made it very clear, <laughs> I'm going to agree to disagree that she did drop the ball. It's very civil of you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have very competitive problems. Me and my wife are very competitive. Uh, there's been almost divorce lawyers called over Mario Baseball, and I'm no longer allowed to play board games at my in-laws. <laughs> did you say Mario Kart? Mario Baseball. Not even oh, Mario, Mario Baseball. Kart. Mario okay. Baseball. Oh, Mario Kart will, once me and Anthony get married, <laughs> it's just, Mario Kart will de defeat us. Yeah, I, oh yeah, yeah. Blue and red shells, uh, that's, that's a recipe for sleeping on the couch. <laughs> oh my God. So I'm going to agree to disagree. So pretty much we're all in agreement. There was maybe a subconscious reaction to dropping the ball. And I like was, how you swung that to sound like it was your, <laughs> your plan and your idea and <laughs> you won. I, I'm good yeah. at that. I'm, I'm good at that because that's how... I hopefully she's not listening. She's home. That's how I get my wife to, like, you know, like I'll make a suggestion. And if I make it feel like it's her idea, she normally says yes. And I've actually taught my older daughter to do that. So she's like, learned the powers. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew tried to do that. Like, he incepted it in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. that's pretty much where we're at. I say a spirited debate, folks. That's good. I'm I'm glad I was somewhat prepared. I'm not as prepared as John, apparently, no. but he still I was still on the right side. He still shut it down. <laughs> Don't choke, please. <laughs> I am uh I am Dottie Hansen and I am defeated. <laughs> I will I will get it. I am defeated. I am the Rockford Peaches of this <laughs> of this conversation. How are you seeing? So right. there is a subconscious reaction to dropping the ball. Is that what we've where John has so politely <laughs> devastated my world with? It's it's a possibility. We'll, okay. we'll make that make that strong suggestion. As Considering guys, that we don't know for sure because it is fictional and it is a movie. Yes. I think that's the best way to, to go. But I mean, we should definitely ask the writers, just tweet them. What else are they doing? I, it's Penny, I, I don't want to sound rude, but is Penny Marshall still alive? <laughs> I really don't want to sound rude. If they are, they got a Twitter. Um, Penny Marshall died. In Dang. 2018. Oh, man. R.I.P. Petty Marshall. Yeah. R.I.P. Laverne. Yeah, man. Okay. So, thank you for coming on the show and completely decimating me on my show. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Yes. And I know two guests that will never be back on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll go start our own podcast. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Subjects we can destroy Andrew on. <laughs> Just bring you on every week. <laughs> yeah. What are you wrong about today? <laughs> <laughs> if you ask my kids everything, so. <laughs> and your wife, probably. <laughs> yes. 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 It's very, yeah, pretty much. She's come to the point where she doesn't. She's hear always me. right. Yeah, because I, I, I can kind of get her to that point. Like I said, it's like a little bit like this is your idea, so it's like a hint. Most of the time, I get shut down. Sometimes I don't. But it's like a, a little nudge. Yeah, in the right direction. it is. She works long hours, so, you know, I got to kind of point her sometimes. She's got work on the brain, so. I feel that. <laughs> so, once again, thank you, Amber. Thank you, John. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thanks to our sponsor, PB Max, whose uh, YouTube commercial I'm watching, and I am 
thoroughly confused and a, and a little frightened about. Yes. Uh, did you like the, all the everything 